gonna keep it low now If you wanna go, let's go Let's wrap it up and hit the road I just got an awesome vibe Striking the wind up post now Liberty's on my mind We've taken off, we've left the ground Hi and welcome to Run Tall with Tim I'm Tim. Thanks for being here. I always appreciate the time that you and I get to spend together, so thanks for tuning in. And I hope wherever you are that you're happy, healthy, and staying safe. On today's video, I'm going to be taking a real close look at a brand new shoe release from Hoka. It's their Gaviota 4. Oak has made a few changes to the Gaviota 4, including a completely redesigned upper. But did these changes make the shoe better or worse? Well, that's the question so we're going to try to answer today. So be sure to stick around. But before I get into it too far, I always like to demonstrate what it looks like to run in the shoes I'm about to review for you. So let's do that. But then when we come back together, I'm going to take a real close look at the Hoka Gaviota 4 to try to answer that all-important question, are these the right shoes for you? Did purchase these with my own money. They cost 170 US dollars. They are a max cushion, max stability road shoe that I ordered true to size and I wear a US men's size nine. They fit me perfectly. Now on my scales, they came in at 10.9 ounces or 310 grams. While last year's version of this shoe for the Hoka Gaviota 3, they come in at around 11.2 ounces on my scales. Now, this is a little different than what you're gonna see on Hoka's website because they actually have the Gaviota 4 coming in slightly heavier than the Gaviota 3. So I don't know what to tell you, Hoka. On my scales, they came in a little bit lighter, but for me, that's a really good thing. So let's start and we'll talk about the midsole first. Now here they have the same amount of compression molded EVA foam in this version of the shoe as they do in last year's version. Now Hoka stopped reporting stack heights you know, a couple of years ago and they went to describing their midsoles in terms of spring measurement or how high your heel sets off the ground, how high your toe sets off the ground. The heel sets 36 millimeters from the ground and the toe is 20 millimeters. So in other words, it's that spring that they're trying to measure here. They still have that five millimeter offset from the heel to the toe. They have two different densities of foam. Because this is a stability shoe, they need to find a way to be able to correct your foot strike to bring it into a healthy level of pronation. Other shoes, now they might use a rail system. Here, Hoka uses a two density foam type of a system and they have what they call their J frame. So you can see here where that J frame is. Now this is a more dense EVA foam and it has to be in order to be able to correct your foot striker to bring it again into a healthy level of pronation. And this is something that they do really well. And I appreciate them using a two foam or two density foam system rather than a rail system because for me, it just feels a bit more natural. So here's the difference. Now with that compression molded EVA foam, if I take my thumbs and try to compress it here to just see how soft it is, you can see that it compresses pretty easily. But when I move back to that J frame, check this out. So I can, I can barely compress that foam. So it is a much stiffer foam, but again, it has to be in order to be able to correct your foot strike. So when we talk about a max cushion shoe, don't expect it to be a max cushion shoe like the Nike Invincible Run or something like the uh, ASEX Gel Numbers 24. Because it's a stability shoe, it simply can't be as soft as those. But in terms of relation to other stability shoes, then these are definitely falling into that max cushion or more plush ride. Now Hoka must have done something a little different in their compression molded EVA foam formula, at least in my opinion anyway, because these do feel a bit more plush than last year's version of the Gaviota 3. And I noticed on their website when I was trying to do a little bit of research to see if that were true, because that's the sense I got when I was running in these. What I did find is that Hoka changed the description from last year's version. So in the Gaviota 3, they listed it as a balanced cushion shoe, but here they changed it to a plush cushion shoe. And I think that they must have done something a little bit different, especially in the heel, because that's where I noticed it most. And these do feel a little bit, not just softer, but a little smoother to run in. And a good indication of that, sometimes, you know, you guys are out on the road and you know that sometimes shoes can 
be a little bit loud when you're running in them because you're not quite in sync or or they don't fit your gait cycle maybe just right or or what what have you it, it can be a little bit loud on the pavement these are really quiet which tells me that you know not only did they feel smooth but they sound like they're smoother to run in as well. So it, while it's not an exact science, what I have found is that louder shoes tend to be a little more clunky underfoot for me and not quite as uh, enjoyable ride or as I roll through my gait cycle, where these I found to be a much quieter shoe. And you can hear that here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, be quiet now and just kind of let you listen for a couple of seconds to the mics um, when I was out running on the pavement. And you can see for yourself just how quiet these are. So let's take a look at the geometry of the midsole. Now here they have a rounded heel with a slight heel bevel. Now that's to create a nice smooth transition as you move through your gait, especially if you're a heel striker. They have a late stage meta rocker, so they start that rocker design a little bit later than they do in other shoes, such as the companion to this one, which would be their max cushion shoe, the Bondi or Bondi 7, that features an early stage meta rocker. So they start in the Bondi 7 a little sooner than that, more at the metatarsal head. But these are a very smooth transition, especially compared to last year's version of the shoe. They feel a little bit more natural. They're not quite as stiff. And to give you an indication of that, if I if I take and I just press on the heel and the toe, and you can see that you know there's a bit of flexibility there. But when I take the, the um, Gaviota 3 and try to do that same thing where I'm pressing on the heel, I'm pressing on the toe, you know, it's pretty tough. I mean, these are really stiff. And I think that's part of the reason that last year when I was talking about the, Ga the Gaviota 3, I felt like they were a little clunky that when I was landing, especially on that uh, midfoot of the shoe, they just kind of felt like a, more of a thud before I moved through. Here, these are a much smoother transition, much more enjoyable ride, I think, than the Gaviota 3. So let's take a look at the upper. Now in the Gaviota 4, they changed significantly over last year's version of the shoe. This is more cloth-like feeling to it, where last year it felt just a bit stiff on the upper and they were hot. They, they just run hot. I didn't feel like these were very breathable. You know, they seemed really shallow in the toe box compared to this version of the shoe. So here I feel like I've got plenty of room, both in the depth as well as the width to be able to display my toes. Super comfortable on foot, much cooler to run in than the Gaviota 3 was. So much improved, I think, over last year's version. They don't have a whole lot else going on here, but I felt like I got locked in and secure across the midfoot section of the shoe. So let's talk about that eyelet chain because this is where they made some significant changes. Now from the from the earlier versions of the Gaviota, they had what I would call a winged system where you know there was kind of two pieces there that wrapped around your foot as you snugged up your laces. Here they went to a traditional eyelet chain and I think it works really well. It feels a little bit cooler and lighter underfoot because you don't have as much material there uh, to stop that airflow. So I, I think they did a good job here and I appreciate the change that they made. And they do have that extra eyelet in case you want to run with the runner's knot. I got locked in and secure all the way back to the heel cup. I didn't have any heel slippage at all. So kudos to Hoka. I think they made a, a good change. And it's very similar, if you're familiar with the Rahi 5, uh, the upper that they featured on that shoe. So overall, I think they did a good job here. So let's take a look at the tongue. Now here they've added some additional padding over last year's version of the shoe. So it's even more plush than it was before. I never felt like the laces were cutting across the top of my midfoot at all. I couldn't feel them. It's very comfortable to run in, but I think they just have more padding than what they needed. I think last year they had plenty there to keep you comfortable in the out running, but you have even more now, so it's even a plusher ride than what you had or experienced it in the past. And oddly, they gusseted just one side of the tongue. I just found it to be a little bit strange. I've never seen that done before. I didn't have any migration of the tongue. It stayed in place really well, so while it works, it just seems a little bit odd to me. So let's take a look at the padding around the heel collar and the tab of the shoe. Now here they have a generous amount, even more so than what I think they had in last year's version of the shoe. It's really comfortable. I didn't have any hot spots at all. Now it extends down, not quite to the footbed, about three quarters of the way down, but it creates a nice solid heel pocket for your heel to set in. I didn't have any heel slippage either side or side or up or down. So let's check out the uh, heel counter of the shoe and just kind of look at that stability. So I put it up on my shoulder. I'm gonna give it that pinch test, see how much structure that they have 
back here and they have a lot of structure, which is what I would expect from a stability shoe. So it's gonna keep your heel in place really well. Now, while they don't have an Achilles heel flare here, they do have this pull tab to help you get your shoes on should you wish to use that. I found it to be actually really convenient. That's not something that I often use as the pull tab, but I found myself using it more and more often on the Gaviota 4. So let's flip these over and we'll take a look at the outsole, see how they're protecting that compression molded EVA foam that you have in the midsole. Now here you can see that they have plenty of rubber here and I think they've got it strategically placed in all of those high abrasion areas where you're likely to see wear first. You can see it's in the heel area and then starting in the midfoot up around through to where you're going to toe off. This is the same outsole design as what they have in the Gaviota 3. So they didn't really change anything in terms of the placement of that outsole rubber. And I have a pretty extensive history with the Gaviota series of shoes and I found these to be really durable and you're definitely going to get your mon money's worth out of them. Overall, I like the changes that Hoka has made over last year's version of the shoe. I found the midsole to be much more enjoyable to run in. It's a little bit smoother on foot and definitely feels a little softer than last year's version. I also like the changes that they made to the upper. It just feels cooler to run in. And I like the changes that they made to the eyelet chain. I prefer the more traditional style over that double layered wing system that they've had in the previous versions of the shoe. The downside is the price tag. It's 170 US dollars. That's a lot of money. That's on the high side, even for a stability shoe. Some things that I would love to see in the future is for them to strip that upper down rather than keep adding more and more plushness to it. It just seems to add weight that's not necessary, at least in my opinion. I'd love to see them, for example, put maybe the upper of the uh, Rencon 3 on this uh, on this midsole. And maybe you put an early stage meta rocker rather than a late stage meta rocker to kind of quicken the shoe up just a little bit. <laughs> I can dream, can't I? Because <laughs> wouldn't that be nice to have a stability shoe that came in around 8.9 ounces with an early stage meta rocker that moved a little quicker through your gait cycle. I'd love to see that maybe into the future. I don't know if it's ever going to happen, but you know, I definitely, I can dream about it. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it for you. As always, run tall, run strong, be kind to one another. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time right here on Run Tall with Tim. You gotta understand that we get one chance, one chance.